uh, we can extend that idea by creating a style definition. You've seen style definitions, for example, in the tutorial uh, that had the, the button clicking game. And what we're going to do here is create uh, some code that actually is going to be the whole function that happens whenever uh, the feel object is, um, uh, is used. And so we have a function. If the action is down, we're saving that initial position. Uh, we're taking the uh, face uh, off of the, um, we're, we're moving it to the end here. Basically, just use this as a template. Um, and then, again, if we find over or away, uh, we're going to change the offset of the thing that we're moving around so that it follows the mouse using that, that same code. And down here, we create a uh, layout. And if you remember the style button, or the, not the style button, but the style word um, lets us create a new widget type um, that is uh, built from other native widgets. In this case, we're creating a style called movable object, um, which is going to be a box, 20 by 20 pixels, with feel and that entire bit of code move style. Now we've got this movable object that's got all of these things, which basically means that it's movable. Uh, what this bit of code up here is going to do is just make the uh, current face the top thing on the GUI as we move it around so it'll pass uh, over other items. And then here we're going to add a bunch of these movable objects at some random position um, uh, in 640 by 640. Uh, we create a movable object that can be moved around. It has the feel move style. This box is 20 by 20 and uh, has a random color. And we create uh, five of those. And then uh, uh, we have some text that says this box, this text in all the boxes is movable, and that also has the feel object. And the code in that feel object is the move style that we had above. You can use that move style code for anything. Just uh, copy it as is. Um, you put feel move style on a GUI item, and it will be click and draggable. In this case, we've created a bunch of randomly colored boxes at random positions, and they are all movable. If you want to handle global events, such as resizing and closing of the GUI, you've already seen this in uh, some of the other examples, you can create uh, or you can use the insert event function. Uh, this one checks for resize events. Uh, you've seen this already in uh, closing examples. If the event type in this case is a resize, you alert um, that uh, it's been resized and return none. And then uh, if it's not a resize, just return the event. And here is, uh, in order to create a resizable window, we use view slash options, the options option. Uh, and the option in this case is going to be resize. That means it's resizable. There's the layout, and inside we have, inside we have some text. Um, so in this case, um, it's just basically going to tell us that if it's resized, it's going to alert us saying, I've been resized. Okay. And to Rebel, we've got a window in this case. Now this window is resizable. As soon as we resize it, it tells us I've been resized. You can use that, for example, to reposition things on screen. What this is going to do is, again, it's going to check for a resize event. And um, we get uh, the offset of a thing we called stay here. That's just going to be a text item. Um, the position of that stay here item is going to be set so that it stays in relation to the parent face. So it's stay here's parent face and size minus stay, stay here's size 
minus 20 by 20. So it's always going to stay in a certain place in relation to the parent face. So it's going to stay in a certain position. And then we update that that uh, item so it moves to its new place and um, return a value. And when we don't want to do anything else, we do that. Um, and if that event is not found, we just return it. That's how we get out of this uh, event function. Now we create the uh, GUI with view layout. Again, has this resize option and the text. So in this case, when we resize, you'll see that text will stay in the given position. In this case, it's always going to stay 20 pixels from the bottom and 20 pixels over. That's with that little bit of uh, code, that calculation. Stay here's offset is always going to stay at the place where the size is, minus its size, minus 20 pixels. So always 20 pixels from the bottom corner. If you want to take that out of a program, if you want to uh, stop, for example, keeping that text at a certain position, um, you use the remove event function. And in this case, we'll call it event func. Um, and we start with a little counter. Um, and what this is going to do is going to stop us after three, after the counter goes up to three. So. Uh, we're searching for close events here, so if you try and close this the first time, what it does is it goes through. Um, if the count equals three, then you remove uh, the event, you use the remove event func, and we're going to take out that event func that we created. We named it event func, and we're going to take it out. Um, and if not, just continue on. Count is uh, added one, so it's uh, moved up now to number two. And then we return none when we're done. Then we have this either at the end. We just return the event. Uh, so it's going to keep going through that. Now the second time we click on close, uh, it's going to be two, and it adds it up again. If it's count as three, then uh, it, it does that. It does, only does that if the count is up to three. So we have some text here. And run it in Rebel. First time I try and close it, nothing. Second time, nothing. Here's the third time. And now the event function is uh, is gone, so it's not going to run through that function anymore. Close it, and we can close it. Between those two things, the feel object and the insert event function, we can respond to just about any sort of event that occurs. Timer events are very useful. Uh, mouse click events, uh, resizing events, any sort of thing that we want to respond to, close events, anything that happens that's not a clicking on a widget we can deal with using those, uh, those coding facilities.